You're watching Morning at NTV. Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us. We are getting into another very, very insightful conversation on education, reopening of schools. We did see primary six, senior three and senior five semi-candidate learners actually report back to school on March 1st. They shall study up to May 21st and they will break off. That is uh, four days before my birthday on May 25th and, I shall, and they shall return on June 7th, yes, and uh, for a special program to cover content missed during the lockdown on June 7th. And then uh, we do know that the 2020 academic year shall be ending on July 24th. That is as a whole, the July 2020 academic year. Now, the 2021 academic year shall kick off on August 7th. No, August 9th. 2021 academic year shall kick off on August 9th of 2021 at this very year. And it shall stretch all the way into 2022, May 2nd. Yes. And then on May uh, 16th, you shall have the 2022 academic year. On May, uh, that is uh, 16th. Uh -huh. It shall kick off on May 16th. It shall stretch all the way to 2023. That is March 24th. And then you shall have the 2023 academic year kick off around April 10th. And it shall stretch all the way up to December 22nd. And then according to the Ministry of Education, they contend by December 22nd, 2023, they would have covered content missed in the 2020 academic year. Let me hope it doesn't confuse you. I have Philip Baguma. He is the Secretary General, Uganda National Teachers Union, with whom we are going to be expounding on this issue. Are schools actually adhering to the SOPs? A very good morning. Good morning, sir. <laughs> There's quite a lot we can talk about on the reopening of schools, vaccination yes. of teachers, learners yes. who are not going back to school because they sought alternative livelihoods, teachers who are refusing to go back to school because they sought alternative livelihoods, private institutions that are not reopening simply because President Museveni's promise was not implemented. The money. <laughs> Let's start with the first reopening. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Mm. Of course, um, People were used to mm. our normal beginning of February yeah. and uh, closing the academic year in December. Indeed. Now, because of the lockdown, we could not proce proceed. <coughs> mm. And um, it is now almost a year when the schools were closed. And you recall in October, the candidate classes were brought back. Mm. Now, it meant, it simply meant that um, there was supposed to be some time to recover mm. uh, and cover the content that they were supposed to cover in uh, term one, term two, and term three. Now, that has taken us and will take us to April uh, and some few days in May for the candidate classes. Now, these other classes which are coming, you will realize some are going to have more time, others less time. This is simply because the ministry is looking at um, what they are supposed to cover. For example, the semi-candidate classes, they are going to join the candidate classes. And that's why they have been given some time up to May 21st. Then shortly after that, mm. they will have two weeks break mm. and then go back on 7th June mm. to complete the term and the year on 24th mm. July. That content that they missed during the lockdown. The mm. assumption is that by that time, they will have covered some content right. that will enable them now to join the candidate classes. Mm. Now... Of course, the schools do not move at the same pace in terms of syllabus coverage. Indeed. There are those where they have uh, more teachers and therefore they are able to cover the syllabus. Even uh, the candidate classes, some of them, when they went back by around December, they were able to cover the syllabus. And that means mm. this other time has been there for revision and remedial work. Mm. But there are those where you find there is one teacher manning the class. Now that means the coverage will be uh, slower compared to the other 
where you find a subject is taught by two people or three people. Now, the, the assumption is with this staggered reopening, the timing they have made is that by 2023, December 22nd, mm. we shall have covered and we shall have come back mm. to the February where we used it to be before COVID-19. Mm. And then the normal school calendar, mm. which people are used to, mm. will resume in 2024. Indeed. That is an assumption that we are not going to have the resurgency of COVID-19. Because if it comes back, then we shall have even this target reopening affected, mm. and therefore we go back to the drawing mm. board. Yes. Mr. Philbert Baguma, it seems like the only standard operating procedure or guideline that is being implemented right now is this target reopening itself by the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, and so forth. The fact that we are opening schools in a staggered manner. Why am I saying this? School proprietors are not imp uh, implementing the SOPs. <laughs> They're saying they do not have the money uh, to recruit more teachers because uh, ensuring that two-meter social distance would have meant buy more desks, buy more resources, and recruit more teachers put up more buildings to accommodate more students. You get what I'm saying? So yes. they are saying they are going back to the old regime of doing things. Pack five kids on a desk. Aren't we going to exacerbate the spread of COVID-19 if the only SOP being implemented is the staggered reopening, the two face masks, and also washing of hands? Well, um, like the saying goes, it is easier said than done. Indeed, indeed. The standard operating procedures as laid out by Minister of Health mm. are meant to help us um, facilitate the prevention mm. of COVID-19. But when you go to the ideal and the reality on the ground, mm. they are not implementable. For example, if you say you need two meter distance, mm in the classroom and in the dormitory. There are very few schools that can fit within that arrangement. But also, uh, I, I think there is a need for relaxation. Mm. When you go to the markets, mm. is the two meter distance there? It's not being implemented in the markets. And if we were to test the people in those markets, we would actually see that there's an uptick in cases. But since we are not testing as it is, mass testing, we will never know. But according to Minister of Health, mm. which is in charge of informing us mm. how far we have gone, mm. it is indicating that the cases have reduced. Because they are focusing on the truck drivers who are coming in from the borders. They are not conducting tests in the markets, in the arcades, and so forth. Uh, and therefore, mm. if that be the case, mm. then our assumption between me and you, mm. we realize that when you go outside now, yes, Mr. Phil. life seems to be normal. Indeed. People have relaxed on the standard operating procedures. Mm. But that said, mm. the schools are trying their best to do what they can and we can using what and, they and have. We don't, and we don't want to blame the schools, Mr. Phil Baguma, because mm. government had promised. So has government <laughs> come through on the promises of, for, the, for the schools before the reopening? O of course... To some extent, mm. because they, they have released funds for standard operating procedures to the schools, but that is to government aided. The private schools are supposed to do it on their own mm. using the resources they get from the parents. Now, wh when you look at some of these issues, fumigation, the cost is high. If you are going to fumigate mm. the entire school, and maybe on a weekly basis or on a daily basis, the schools may not manage. And um, when you force it out, it means the pressure will go to the parents and the guardians. Hmm. And parents and guardians, some of them have failed to send their children to school because they don't have the money. They have lost jobs. They are uh, on half pay. Hmm. Uh, and therefore, the situation is complex. Hmm. So as we reopen schools and as we monitor and assess the situation we shall be informed by what is on the ground mm. for example from the time candidate classes 
went back to school. We didn't have serious issues apart from a few cases, mm. about 257 in the entire country. Mm. And the Ministry of Health managed the situation. Mm. Uh, and therefore, I think some of these can be managed as we learn to live with mm. COVID-19. Let's talk about the facts, Mr. Philbert Baguma. Given that uh, we had some candidate learners go back to school on March 1st, would it be safe to surmise or conclude that all the students who are semi-candidates are all back into the school setting? It is not possible. Obviously, mm. there are some who have not gone back mm. because their parents failed to raise the money. There are others who got married. There are others who went into business and they are saying there is no reason why I should go back to school. Mm. So a number of issues mm. have made some of the learners not return to school. What about some other factors like schools increasing school fees? Does it, does it play a part in stopping these parents from sending school, uh, it parents does. To school, uh, children to school? It does, mm. because, some, because government is uh, guiding that mm. um, separate borders from the scholars. Yes. Mm. Uh, and some schools are committing offenses by saying, okay, since they want us to do this, let me make my school boarding. You, you don't make a boarding school simply because you are solving a problem, because you are supposed to be allowed by the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. and Sports. Mm -hmm. They are supposed to give you um, permission mm -hmm. to operate a boarding school. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see, when you say, let me make it a boarding school, how about the parents? Mm -hmm. Do they have the capacity to pay fees as per the boarding mm -hmm. school? Mm -hmm. Two, the ministry came out and said, don't increase school fees. Mm -hmm. But when you, are, when you are listening to what is being said, mm -hmm. some schools have increased school fees. And the disguise is that they have to be able to implement the SOP, so they uh -huh. need more money. Mm. Now, this has also pushed out some of the learners mm -hmm. from school, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. Because the situation we are dealing with is not a normal situation. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we should be seen to see how best can we handle this situation mm -hmm. without hurting mm -hmm. the other party. Mm -hmm. uh, and that would be a win-win situation. Otherwise, when you say we are going to implement SOPs mm -hmm. and therefore bring this, bring that, and the parent is not able and the learner gets out of school, then that becomes yes. an unfortunate mm -hmm. situation. As an MG, we also do know, Mr. Philbert Baguma, that it's not only the students who are grappling with this uh, case of uncertainty, even the school head teachers, the yes. proprietors, many of them have, have had to sell off their schools. Banks have taken over these schools and so forth. So if we are actually living up to the fact that some schools have closed, won't that actually lead to overcrowding in some of the other schools that are still open? If my school is closed, that would mean that the students I was taking care of are going to go to another school. And if that school did not erect new structures to be able to implement SOPs, that means there's going to be overcrowding in, this, uh, in the schools that we have in this country. Aren't you afraid of this problem of, of overcrowding moving forward now that some schools are still closed? Obviously, overcrowding was there before mm. and it will continue to be there. Mm. And you know, you are not supposed to send away the Ugandan child who is coming to join the school. That will be, that mm. will be unfortunate because mm. they are entitled, they have a right to education. Mm. And if this school has closed within the, within the vicinity, Mm. It means you are supposed to go to the nearest if that is what you can afford. Mm, mm. Therefore, uh, overcrowding will be there mm. amidst uh, social distancing. All right. <coughs> and you find you have no option but to accommodate those learners mm. because if you reject them... Mm. O on the basis of social distancing, All right. then you are disadvantaged. All right, Philbert, we have less than three minutes. Let's talk about the issue of the school reopening for the academic year at 2021, when this one closes on July 24th. Yes. We do know that the 20 academic year 2021 will shall kick off around August 9th and shall go all the way to uh, May uh, 2nd of 2022. Yes. So what we do want to know, why you consulted on this as teachers? If you're not ready to implement a piece with a small number of students, when we reopen for everyone, aren't you afraid that there's going to be a problem and why you consulted? 
Of course, we have been in uh, meetings uh, and we have looked at some of these. Mm. Of course, we are being guided by Minister of Health. And they come up and say, mm. this is what is supposed to be done. But the reality is, some of them cannot be done. Uh, and therefore, the, the next course of action is to monitor and see if the, if the challenge is not solved within the limited time, mm -hmm. then it means the reopening will come to a halt. Mm. But as of now, so far so good. Mm. We haven't had um, cases. The learners have returned. Mm -hmm. Although, unfortunately, some of them have not come. All right. And the timing, we cannot solve it because okay. it is a crisis. Mm. And therefore, we have to manage the new normal. All right. And in managing the new normal, we have to think without a box. Indeed. Yes. So what advice, Mr. Philbert Baguma, do you give to government going forward? Um, going forward, government should um, intensify the consultations with stakeholders to see what is it that can work and what is it that cannot work. Otherwise, when we become strict on some of these standard operating procedures, we may cripple the education of the country. And once education is crippled, mm. rest assured, most of the things will not work. Mm. There are more challenges outside the school than when the learners are in school. And therefore, experience has shown mm. that school is the best place for the learners. Mm. And let us manage the learners within the school environment mm. than leaving them outside the school mm. because when they are outside the school you will find them everywhere mm. and which is not easy to control them. Mr. Philbeck, is this progress sustainable development or distortion of the education system? The staggered reopening, is it sustainable of, development or a distortion of the education system? Of course it has distorted everything mm. because um, the sustainable development goals uh, goal number four uh, indicates that we should have quality education for all without leaving any child Indeed. behind. Mm. Now, during the COVID-19, of course, distortion came in. Mm. There are some learners who continued mm. to learn mm. and others never learned at all. Indeed. Now, with this staggered reopening, I do believe it's a matter of accepting that it is a new normal, mm. and this is the way to go. Phil Babaguma, the Secretary General of Uganda National Teachers Union. Many thanks for having made the time to speak to us. It's been a Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. And of course, you're still watching Morning at NTV. July 24th will be the end of this academic year 2020. The new academic year 2021 shall kick off on August 9th all the way to 2022 on May 2nd. The one in 2022 shall kick off on May 16th all the way to 2023 around, uh, around March 24th. And then that one in 2023 shall kick off around April 10th and kick off and uh, stretch all the way to December 22nd. That is 2023. My name is Romy Busiku. The show is morning at NTV. You can't get that information anywhere else, so stick around for more.